Okay, we're back and I've got my white panel here and I did segment it off because we're going to do some black fire, uh, not black fire, I'm actually going to do like a black smoke, I guess it could be black fire, black smoke over here. And uh, what we're going to do here is just going to be some blue fire over white. And again, I've been trying to change this up, remember we did the traditional fire that was very untraditional but, you know, realistic fire look and then we went to the really funky kind of green fire I did. And uh, the first one had a lot of colors, a lot of steps, a lot of techniques, a lot of push-pulls back and forth. We discussed all that. And uh, this one, uh, and then we got even simpler with the green. We really only dealt with uh, lemon yellow, uh, emerald green, and, uh, and white. And, and that was it. I don't think, I, and I did, I, I saw I was going to come back in with black. I didn't. There's only three. Uh, okay, um, we're going to do it in two. It's like, name this tune. Let's name that fire. Paint that fire. I can do it in two colors. So we're going to do it with Cree blue and white and I could honestly probably get away with not using the white. Now can I even go less than that? No, you can't. You got to have paint in your airbrush to do something otherwise it's air. But we're going to use with cream blue and I got it mixed up already three to one as we talked before 40-50 and that's three parts candy one part 40-50 and then add a little bit of 40-11 about five percent stir stir you know, why do I only add about 5%? If it was an, another paint like a uh, you know, thicker paint, yeah, I would add maybe up to 10%. The candy is so thin on its own, it kind of thins down that 40-50 when you mix it all up. And it's still too thick for me to be happy with with the airbrush, so I add a little bit of reducer in that. And it just makes it kind of grade 8 better. Now, when working and starting out just with the candy and not an opaque, uh, you got to be a little bit caref more careful. I'm like honking on that opaque, but you're, you honk on the candy, you're going to get runs and drips. And you got to be really careful on dragging the airbrush through it. If you're working with an opaque and you drag the air, not the airbrush, the stencil, and you leave a mark, you can always come back in and cover it up. You can't cover things up with a candy. All you do is darken and accent them. So we're going to... Um, Let's see how this goes. It's, everything's an experiment here. It's like, you know, we, we don't have any B-roll. Everything is, everything's the B-roll. So I'm going to, over here, just do a little bit of a, see how the, I like this color. And I'll do a lot of what I call air spraying, where I'm just going to be, you know, spraying the, the, the air just to make sure the paint dries. Let me move that up a little bit like that. Oh, that's a little something in the paint. And then uh, let me make one here. Spin over to this side. And I'm just kind of moving this around a little bit, kind of creating shapes, which is all this is really about. I want more and more blue down here at the base. And you almost have to see the shape you're creating. It's almost backwards because you see this and you're painting this. If you paint this, this doesn't look like a flame. It looks like a drip. So I'm painting what the stencil's not. So you're kind of like just hurting the paint around a little bit. It'd be like those guys that do the sand paintings and they kind of erase and move stuff away. So that's what we're doing, except we're not really erasing. We're just focusing on where we're not painting. It's a little bit of a different mentality and it takes some practice to get into it. If you're not careful, you create, instead of realistic fire, you can easily create realistic spaghetti. It just looks really, really bizarre. Now, am I going to create any little uh, um, embers? No, I don't think so. I could, I don't know. So, <laughs> usually I'm in a class, I'll be like, what do you think, should we? My cameraman's not going to talk to me, so. <laughs> I'll say, what do you think, should we? Nothing, silence. Kind of digging that. 
Just fog a little blue over the whole thing lightly that when we unmask it, we actually have a separation of a panel. Otherwise, it just won't look like anything. So it looks like I didn't do anything. Trust me, there's blue there now. I'm gonna do a real subtle background shape back there so the whole area looks like it's fire coming out of it there. And let's grab the little guy. Let's grab the little stencil. Sometimes he's fun to play with. Throw him in there for some different level of detail. And am I going to come in and do that freehand stuff? I haven't done that yet. This has all been 100% st stencil and just, or do you mean from a distance? Yeah, I'm going to come in and do some of that. Also, be really careful whenever you're painting, always have a needle by because you want to make sure and check that hole in the top. If that clogs up, it can affect the paint flow. And then also, every now and then, I'll like maybe release the end cap a little bit and retighten it. And the reason I'm doing that is sometimes paint gets wedged up inside there on the inside. And by just re, re loosen and tighten, it breaks that paint loose. There it goes. I could feel something that was caught in there. There you go. That's, that's much nicer. Get nice and blue down here because I'm going to come in with that white. So I am going to use white. I'm not going to just do it in one. I could have. Uh, much nicer. So I like this because this gives it kind of a cool little. And I'll be doing some of this with the smoke a lot because that little, it kind of has that cigarette smoky look going on there. And uh, I had some discoloration or something that was right there. Well, I can sit around and cry about it or I can just put a little bit of a wispy flame thing here and cover it up and you won't even notice it. Nothing like a little side, little, little distraction to hide an imperfection. And of course, you know, no good deed goes unpunished. It's like, oh, we made a little, we did something over there. Got to balance it out with something over here on this side. Nothing wrong with that. I really dig these little weird little random wisps. It's kind of cool looking. Plus, it takes away that stencil -y look. You know, you get these areas that look like too stencil -y. If it looks too stencil -y, Anytime you do a technique, here's a little food for thought. Anytime you do a technique and it looks like a technique, in other words, it's like, oh, I really like the way you did the drop shadows. You just did too many drop shadows. Oh, I like the way you used that stencil. You used the stencil incorrectly. Stencils, techniques, tricks. People should say, oh, I love the portrait. Oh, I like the way you did that mural. Not, ooh, I love your, the way you did that eraser the scratching. You know, I love the way you did the highlight. You know, it, if you look at something, you say you like it, and then you say, well, what do you like about it? And then an artist comes in and says, well, I like the technique you did here. That's fine. But when an average person off the street is like, oh, I love it when you use stencils. It's like, ah, oh, screwed up. So these are all techniques. They're not the end all be all of the paint job. Do not make them the star of the show. They're the extras. Nothing wrong with it. They're important. They don't need that much attention. Yeah, I'm digging that. That's cool. Let's see if we can bring in some white and not ruin it. Now, the reason I say that is I can just leave it right there and say, this is my fire in one take. But again, that's not the point. It's like, let's do the best. Now, I may use this white and say, mm, yeah, next time fire in one take is a good idea. You know, sometimes you go, how do you know when you've gone too far? I get that all the time from my students. It's like, how do you know when you go too far? I go, uh, you go too far and you don't do it again. You know? Because otherwise, you never, you're just going to take it to someone else's hearsay, someone else's point of opinion, point of view, maybe their ability. Maybe they sucked, and maybe they can't take it this far. Maybe you could take it further. You need to have a little bit of ego thinking, I can do it better than that person. Even if you know that person's better than you, you still could probably do it better if you do it differently. So let's go ahead and try the white and see if uh, 
Uncle Craig's wrong and he should have stopped at blue. Okay, now how am I gonna do? Am I gonna use the stencil? I'm gonna start freehand. What do you think? What do you think, cameraman? Give me a nod. Stencil, freehand. Freehand. Oh, he spoke, okay. Freehand. Let's start over here. And this blue, I knew it was going to do this, and I'm kind of stoked about it, because that way, if I make a real big mistake, you'll never know, because it absorbs, it's, the candy is so reactive, it's taking my white and just kind of absorbing it, which is great. It, it adds a little softness in there. So I can do some embers. You said you weren't doing embers. Shut up. Yeah, so what? I said I might not do embers. In this situation, embers are perfect because the blue, I've got to hit it like three times before that white really pops. No, oh, I love that. That's, that. That makes me happy. Because if I come in and I do a one thing of white and the white just goes, then you're like, oh man, you gotta come in with more blue. Let's use a little stencil guy. And we'll bring back a few little areas here. Lighten up a couple of things. Now be careful, you don't your stencil gets starts getting wet and you put it on the surface. <laughs> yeah, that's always a that's a good day. It's not going to ruin the piece, it just all of a sudden creates some more work. Like, okay, I guess I'm going to have to do that little weird splat of paint on the rest of it to make it look like I did it on purpose. I'll let you know a little uh, secret. They always say uh, a good painter makes a mistake and he fixes it and no one knows. A great painter makes a mistake and he charges more. So. Yeah, I think that's it. I'm not going to do any more to that. You can keep on fudging it around, you know, softening up a few things here and there, but I think that gets the point across. Um, whether you do realistic fire with like 30,000 steps or you do it with three steps or two steps, uh, if it looks good, then you win. It's not like, ah, oh, I did that in five. Oh, I did that in four. Uh, this is a much different realistic fire than the one I did uh, with the other colors and the very beginning, which I don't, I don't know, I had like 10 colors or something laid out here. Uh, the, the black is going to be just, just black. You know, I, 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 will, I will not even come in with white on it because that gives a little bit, I don't want there to be fire inside. It's just going to be like a smoky type thing. So I'm doing that only in one. So yes, I will be doing something in one step. It's more of a smoke effect look. Whatever you're doing, how many few steps, the one thing you want to make sure is that every step has a reason. If you're doing something, that step has no reason. Or let's say that step is, is counteracted. I, I'll do sometimes something that takes 10 steps, and the fifth step, I then covered up with six and seven and eight and did the fifth again as nine. Well, that's because I made a mistake. If you make a mistake, you have to fix something. The next time you do it, you don't make the same mistake and fix it again. You just don't make the same mistake. That's why when you do something in 20 steps, and the next time you do it in 10, you either A, figure out a better way, or you're just not telling people, that, yeah, 10 steps, so that was a screw up. That's the game. Every step, everything you do has to have a reason. If it's, you say, why'd you do that? Well, the first time I did it, I made a mistake, so I'm making the same mistake each time to give it that same essence. Oh, bullshit. Make the same mistake each time because you can't even analytically figure out that it was a mistake. You don't even know what you did right, so you think everything is sacred. Don't, don't be that artist. No. So anyway, we're done with that. I'm going to let it dry because I got that white pretty hammered and I'm going to let it dry a little bit, flip my paper over there because I don't want any of my black to contaminate my pretty blue flame, and load up my airbrush with a combination of the new 
the new wicked bl opaque black, and I combined it one to one with the Candy 2.0 black candy. Why? Uh, because I like the translucency of the black candy, a little bit of that violet in there, and I like the coverage and the sprayability of the new opaque white. So I'm going to put those together, and I'm not going to add any um, any 4050. Why? Because the resin is inside the opaque. So when I'm compounding my candies into opaques, don't need to use a 4050. Woohoo! One step removed. And that, that's a really good thing. But uh, I still will always keep my bottle of 4050 because I, I love it. So anyway, let me get my airbrush cleaned out and we'll go to the next color and do the final black smoke effect. Okay, I got my blue flame all masked off so I don't get any black on it. And I got my combination of opaque black and candy 2.0 black, one to one. And, uh, and that's it. That's it. Oh, I add a little bit of reduce, about 5% of the 4011, but no 4050 in this mix. Didn't need to because it's already in that opaque black, as I mentioned before. And I switched over. I'm using a little bit of a different brush uh, using the, the custom CH right here. And I just did that because um, it's a little bit finer line work and I'm uh, just too lazy to clean out my Eclipse. So plus I want to grab this one. Now, I'm going to use my H stencil, which we talked about. My, by the way, this stencil is still available from Art Tool, and it's just called, the, I think it's called the H stencil, Magic H, whatever we made made jokes about it. I've, so I've used this stencil for freaking decades. Uh, for, I, it wasn't even, it wasn't like, I didn't create it for fire. This was my go-to French curve stencil for masking off uh, areas, uh, doing drops around flames and doing things like that, masking off something and, you know, faces, whatever. It was just was something I could hold in one hand and then use a bit and piece or whatever and I not have to worry about this hand. I don't like two-handed stencils. I am going to bring another stencil in, and this is for all the OCD people are like writing down, okay, H stencil art tool, I'm going to order this. And then this one is uh, an oldie but goodie. It, uh, if you stop the video right now, see who in the room can guess which one this is. This is a stencil from a guy named Richard Markham back in the day, who was known for doing, uh, I believe he did a flame video for, he was, one of the, he was the first person I think to do an actual realistic fire video for Kratex. And uh, really nice guy, great guy, uh, really good artist. and. Uh, Interesting stencil. Now, I view all the, what I call the blob stencils back in the day, and mine's kind of a blob stencil. I mean, if you think about it, it's a long blob stencil. I don't use these for fire that much. Um, I, uh, because one thing, once, this is not, it, you need more than just one stencil to do that. Now, this one has the long curves I like. But this works good for smoke. Now, for those of you out there just scream, we can't buy it. You might be able to find it. Who knows? It might be out there. Just here, here. Photoshop, you know, just screen grab, cut out, make blob stencil yourself. See, there you go. Um, market it, make money, become famous, take over the world. Uh, whatever. Uh, it's a blob stencil. Make it even want. Just curves. Don't have any sharp angles, you know. Uh, work on your scissor skills. So just any shape you want. Knock yourself out. I'm going to use this uh, in conjunction with... Uh, this to make my smoke. So uh, enough talking. Let's let's start painting. Now with smoke, you want to be careful not to do it too much like fire. So I'm gonna I'm not gonna have a lot of points and stuff. But I, what I am gonna do is maybe create some undulations. And I don't want any interruptions in like these undulations. So I'm just kind of. I'll make this kind of thing going on there. And right now it's like, that doesn't look much like smoke. I know, I agree, it doesn't, but just wait, wait for it, wait for it. You also want to come in and create some secondary shapes. Let me see. I like. Right there. And let me see. <laughs> Got to get used to that. I haven't used a stencil like this in a while, so I got to think about it. It's always a warning sign when I got to think about something. It's like, uh-oh, Craig's thinking. You can sm you can smell the burning gears. And then I also like using the stencil. Oop, don't step on your hose. That causes problems. And make sure you're not going to come in and accidentally create a a sharp point, because that's a natural thing that you almost accidentally do when you're working with smoke, or working with a stencil, you'll create little smart points. I'm just coming in and just making a bunch of 
And I'm going to come in and freehand. I can't help it. I have to do that. It's just what I do. Let me add a little bit more reducer to it. I think I need a little bit more. Probably should, you know, if it was the clips, that would have been the perfect mix. I'm getting a little bit of spitting right now, just because I'm not using very much pressure. Oh, that, <laughs> turn the pressure up. There you go. Cool. Well, I shouldn't say cool. I haven't tried it yet. It might, might be horrible. It might not work at all. Um, no, cool. Good. Uh, let's try this one. You just got to always make sure you're not going back into freaking fire mode by accident. It happens. Now I am going to, there we go, I want that really dark right there. They create these little weird wispy things, like little details on here, like the smoke is like, almost, uh, <laughs> how many of you guys are fans of Lost? Um, I love Lost at first, I love J.J. Abrams, I love the smoke monster, I don't love them all together, because I didn't like the fact there was no explanation for the smoke monster, but the smoke monster himself, CGI smoke, I mean, thank you Harry Potter, but still, CGI smoke, yes, it's, it's the bomb. So let's do a little, like, like I said, it's the CGI, like, it's like smoke that's overly complicated, you know? Smoke that's so badass, Keith Richards just wish his cigarette smoke was that good. And before we had CGI smoke, all we had was Keith Richards and the cigarette, where somehow you could create smoke that was actually a living entity around him, that he could actually, you know, have conversations with his own cigarette smoke. Stop here. There. Go there. Go there, hose. Jeez. Did the videos for the last couple days and my hose all of a sudden now is copying an attitude. No, Craig, I want to go over here. I don't want to be a hose anymore. I want to be an airbrush. I want to hang out with my new friend, your shoe. Now, there's a couple of other different techniques. I'm not sure if I'm gonna, see, where's my texture stencil I had around here somewhere? Ah, it's over there. One second, off camera moment. And we've got, yes. Now, the reason this is fun is you can come in with this guy, Gerald Mendez's texture stencil, thank you very much, and we move it and we get a really cool undulating smoke. As long as you don't catch it on the little weird strap over here, a weird connector, you can do some really cool, and this is when the paint's wet, it drags in a very cool way. Oh, yes, smoke monster. Oh, my freaking smoke monsters are badass. There we go, very happy with that. You know what it kind of reminds me also is almost the kind of patterning, the way the smoke, and you're really kind of thinking about fluid dynamics and the way, and thermal dynamics, the way the smoke rises and the thermals, but the, the striations, it's very similar to one of those hydro dip things where you have all the paint in there, no matter what you do, it doesn't combine, it just stratifies, it spreads out or compresses, but the line won't go away. So that's what you only think about is you want to have, you know, make sure that even all the little lines you're doing, they're, they're following you know, the direction of the smoke, they're kind of, they are eventually dissipating. But you get these areas of this really harsh compressive 
area of the smoke. Can you do too much? Yes. How do you know when you've done too much? Like I said before, you do too much, and then next time don't. Now I do want there to be a little light. It's gonna kind of create a undulating level of smoke around the whole piece. So when I unmask this, you'll have a very light, granted faint, but it'll be there, it'll be, you'll see it, distinctive layer of the smoke around the outside so it have a border. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do. I like that. And I'm not going to bring in white. Could I? Eh, I could. But you know the problem is, is that the white I'm using is not the same as the white of the base panel. So it might give a bluing effect. It might give a weird kind of a cast. It might have a more, you know, who knows? I'm not sure exactly what the white is on this panel. Uh, it's painted, but I'm not sure. If it's a powder coated panel, you don't know. Plus, you don't want to bring the white in. White's for highlights. Smoke doesn't have highlights. Now, if I was going on top of a black panel, yeah, I use white. Use white on top of a black panel, white smoke, like cigarette smoke. So on a, on a white panel, but the black smoke just has a really cool, if you want to see some really cool, inky, scary, freaky smoke. Um, matter of fact, what black smoke monsters original inspiration was from is acetylene smoke. We used to do this old technique where we use a acetylene torch with oxygen turned off and the acetylene turned down very low and you just get this sooty, black, crappy smoke and you waft it as it's coming out of the torch. It's this black, it's just dri it's dripping ash. You waft it towards the paint job on the graphic and the smoke that's f swirling around sticks to the paint job in a smoke pattern. So it literally is like you captured the smoke and now you can't touch it, it comes right off. So as soon as you get it on that graphic, then you come in and you lightly hit it with inner coat clear. Uh, you could hit it with 4050, just or, you know, really lightly and it locks it down and then you get what's called, he's calling the settling smoke trick. And you used to do that on top of silvers and put candies on top of it. Um, we we reinstigated, re 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 what is it? We basically are starting a new program here at the videos at Create Text Colors called uh, the Cheap Tricks and Special Effects series, in which I'm going to show in the future. I'm going to have to see if we can find a, a set of uh, acetylene torch. I'm bringing it in here and show the old school way of doing it, and some other ways you can do it just by burning masking tape, which is nasty, but it does sort of, acetylene is better. Uh, plus, I just want to see Kennedy's face when I'm actually uh, playing with an acetylene torch in his pretty clean white booth. Um, but we're going to do that. That'll be a cool effect. Matter of fact, Please, the, the reason we're doing this is you guys asked for these, um, for these on, on the, te the tech, tech line, on the, you, know, the, you went online and said, hey, wouldn't it be great if you did some, uh, some, some realistic fire, some different versions of it. So hey, we did it for you. We not only did realistic fire, we gave you J.J. Abrams Smoke Monster. And uh, granite, just like Lost, we won't explain the origins or even why it exists, but we'll just sit back and awe at the factor of it and so we got our blue fire we got our our black smoke we are going to have Chris Arpin come in and clear all four of them because uh, these look pretty good on their own but those other two are gonna look really really good cleared anything over black looks better cleared white is, is it'll look about the same except it'll be shiny so we'll get these suckers cleared have them all together and then we'll close off this video so hope you've been enjoying it so far and uh, stay tuned we're gonna show them clear coated well, I hope you've enjoyed our realistic fire video, and we gave you four distinctly different styles of realistic fire, as well as different application techniques, different processes over white, over black, using candy, using candy and opaque, using just opaque, using the new Kratex uh, opaque colors. Uh, had a good time doing it, had some fun, uh, showed using the H stencil, as well as uh, using uh, an old Richard Markham stencil for that, um, that smoke. I do a smoke monster thing also, so which I've not done done in the video. Uh, that's a, I can't really think of any other way to wrap it up. This video is because of you guys. You guys go on that the computer and you, you start asking questions like, hey, I want this video. Hey, I want that. Uh, keep it coming. You, you keep on asking for videos and we'll keep on giving you videos. That's the way we can do it over here. That's how we roll at Craytex Colors in the beautiful downtown East Granby, Connecticut. And I'm Craig Frazier. I will see you next time.